Good evening, everyone. If you saw a little bit of sneaky me popping up, balancing all the faders and stuff again, digital and physical. So, uh, good evening. This is episode 26. 26. 26 times we've been doing this. And um, yeah, so thanks for joining us. If you keep coming back for more, if you're new, then welcome. And uh, we do this, making music. Uh, it just so happens that we uh, we use Ableton Live. And uh, I'm Simon, Ableton Certified Trainer. And throughout this whole escapade and take over, taking over <laughs> of this uh, YouTube channel is uh, my co-pilot, Tim. And I've got to get his little... Uh, Thing to come up there so you know exactly who he is because sometimes oh. it doesn't come up oh there you go i press oh, mine got, as well oh, again. we got it today oh, you've got it. it there you go uh, and you, you like pressing yours as well don't you i never get an even share of the uh oh. of, of the titles popping up there you go so that's who we are thanks for joining <laughs> us if you're watching on uh facebook do say hi in the comments because i'm simulcasting this streaming it onto um the Facebook page. It's my Facebook page. Just doing it as a bit of an experiment, you know. And like I said last time, just so people who I've known for years go, oh yeah, I saw you last night doing that thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so thanks for joining us. So, Tim, how are you doing, man? Long I'm time right. no see-ish. We've been we've been busy, haven't we, Paul? It's been a, not, we spoke infrequently over the last uh, week or so, but, yeah. but, but it's usually much more frequently. How are you keeping? I'm all right, yeah. It's um, it's definitely jumper weather in Manchester, and uh, the shorts have gone away in the summer draw. And um, you yeah. have a summer draw. Oh yeah, man, you got a summer that, draw. That, that's quite uh, efficient. That um, uh, is that you're doing, or is that your missus is doing? <laughs> I don't even need it. I didn't need to ask that question, did I? <laughs> I didn't need to answer it. Yeah. <laughs> Enough of this draw shenanigans. Who started this? Yeah, so yeah, so it's definitely colder. And I always think, you know, this. I've been to two gigs as well. Weekend, oh, Friday, you? Saturday, yeah. two gigs. Yeah, I went to see Sea Fever, who I'm always talking about because I did a remix for them. You know them guys. Yeah. Um, they're like from various Manchester-based bands. Like Phil and uh, Tom play for New Order, guitar and bass. And the singer, you and he plays for Johnny Marr, bass. Mm -hmm. But he sings for them. Very complicated. And Beth and... Um, oh, what's the other guy? I always forget his name. <laughs> the drummer. Anyway, and they're all from like different bands and Manchester people and that. So I saw them. And then I saw Wet Leg on Saturday. Wet and Leg? Yeah. Oh. And if you don't know who Wet Leg are... You know, I, I don't mean, just, know. Well, I like the name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've not met many people who don't know who Wet Leg are. So they're, they're basically uh, two girls from the Isle of Wight, which in its, you know, that, that's good enough to get signed to Domino Records, that, isn't it? Two girls from the Isle of Wight. Mm -hmm. And they got a band together, and they write really funny, catchy, punky, poppy songs, and they're really good. And uh, they, they shall be taking 2022 by storm, no doubt. So I saw them at Night and Day in Manchester, and it was like a very interesting gig. Check them out. Why, why, why would you use the word interesting to describe the gig? Uh, because of their uh, very quick rise. I think the first song, uh, Shays Long, uh, had 2.4 million plays in a few months. And with only one song, people were like wanting to see them and things, you know, lots of industry insider shenanigans, I think. They've obviously done a marvellous job. Of yeah, song, but they but are good. <laughs> they are good. They are cool and uh, modern and fun. Lots of fun. Fun to yeah. be had by all. I'll have to check Anyway, out. so that's what I did. That, that, was, that was just, you know, what were you up to? But yeah, also, I've been looking at Ableton Live and different plugins and things and getting people on the show. And tonight's guest is none other than one of our regular viewers who has now become an Ableton Certified Trainer. And that's James Tuck. So he'll be joining us about 8 o'clock UK time, uh, depending on when you're watching this. If you're watching it on a replay, in about 25 minutes from now. <laughs> so, yeah, James is great. I'm going to uh, show you a little bit about what's on Simon's browser because it just enables me to remember, first of all. 
<laughs> what? To, to get the yeah. usual calamity out yeah, of the way. Yeah, yeah, just get it. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Here we go, here we go, here it is. What's on Simon's browser? Yeah, I mean, somebody did actually say to me when I did, I did something in Liverpool and somebody just shouted, what's on Simon's browser? So I thought, this is, <laughs> this is, this is going, this is, this is a real thing. So, so we've, we've made enough of a calamity out of it that it's now become a thing. Yeah. A strong theme, a theme yeah. that's strong, strong enough to theme. be picked up by live audiences. Excellent. It is. You like it. So I need to look at this screen. So I remember that last time we were chatting away and, um, People were like, we can just see your browser. So this is James, who'll be on later, and I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna show this now because I don't want to keep going back and backwards and forwards because it's just confusing. This is James. James Tuck, um, based in Essex, and as it says, he's an experienced educator, and we'll find out all about him. He's doing some really cool things, um, not only in his school, but he's just become a Ableton certified trainer, and. Um, just kind of making education in high schools like 50 times more fun than when any of us lot were there, probably, unless you're actually still there already. <laughs> so do let us know, by the way, if um, you are already or still in school doing music and stuff because James is doing a great, great job. So that was, that's James. James is on later on. And then the next thing, which has been, uh, depending on what you're into, um, this has been a, a bit of a topic. And this is the Extended Sounds by Mode Selector. Now, this is a, an Ableton pack that came out uh, last week. And Mode Selector, German, I don't want to call them a band. Like, you know, they're the kind of producers and they've done all kinds of stuff. Like electronic, but also, you know, pretty, some of it's quite wacky, some of it's quite calm. Um, yeah. if, if, you know, sometimes it can be quite gritty and techno and glitchy. Um, I'm sure you'd like it, Tim, if you've never heard them before. I've, I've listened to them like, over the years. They've done some great stuff. So they released this pack. Now, if um, you've never heard them before or you've never really gone for any of the packs, you can get a free demo. Excuse me. And it's like um, just the certain parts of the pack you can play with. Now, if you're thinking, okay, what do I, what's good about this? Now, you can actually, if you go here, this is um, Monkey Town Records, who obviously they release on. And it tells you all about it. They're actually doing a live stream tomorrow evening. So that'll be Thursday, the 28th. Um, and if you go there, you can see right here. You can click there and it starts tomorrow, 7 p.m. And I think that is European time. And there it is. You can just go there and, and have a look. I'm going to go through this so you can have a look at it um, because it's, it's quite good. I'm going to show Tim some of the sounds. Cool. And before we do that, there's another plugin that I found. Now, this one is by Dawson, which is an amazing name, Dawson. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's called Abyss, the actual one I'm going to show you. Um, and I mentioned it when we were on the phone before, Tim. So, And what I thought was pretty good, it's called Abyss, right? Uh, Abyss. And um, it's a visual synth, which as much as I'm thinking... You know, I was talking about plugins, and it doesn't have to look graphically great to sound great, but this is fun, and I like this one. And um, even on this uh, web page, it talks about what celebrities say about Abyss. Now, obviously, they've got like, is it, you say Nietzsche and H.P. Lovecraft and <laughs> Ed Edgar Allan Poe? And they just basically say, We peer into the Abyss, we grow sick and dizzy. Our first impulse is to shrink away from danger. <laughs> Unaccountably, we remain. I, 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 I think that's absolutely brilliant. I love Magic, that. innit? So they've actually used people in the HP look. Quotes graph. from Nietzsche. <laughs> yeah. These quotes. If you gaze long enough into an abyss, the abyss will gaze back to you. Oh, yep. Yeah, and that's that's a very, very famous phrase from yeah. uh, Nietzsche's so, work. So th this is that. But then when you go into the actual more product, and this is where you actually see it, you can get your 90-day free trial. And um, so I'm just going to show it you. Yeah, oh, let's just show you. So that's that. That's what's on Simon's browser this week. But I thought if I just get it all done there, you can see and then you can what I'm on just about. Turn your browser off. Don't forget and that. And then bit. I can sh turn my browser off. So let's just do it. Boom. So there we go. MHO says uh, next the crowds will be singing Groove Appreciation at us all. Well, yeah. that's that, the, who, that said that? who said that? Who said that? MHO. 
Yeah, groove appreciation. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Yeah, but... and, it, and and we'd like to take credit for it, but unfortunately we can't because it's all Ned's work. <laughs> yeah, Ned, yeah. Ned the he did actually do that. Mm. Yeah, even the vocal and everything. I'm just thinking that that actually that happened. I did a little yeah. bit of a guitar on it, you know, <laughs> MCPS and all that lot. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna do that thing. I'm gonna do, do it. it. I'm gonna do it quick so no one notices it. Oof! Ooh, it's everywhere. There, there you go. Are. Right. You know, some people, this is the favourite part of the show, and some people fast forward this bit. <laughs> so, you know, whoever you are, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara. Is that, oh, is that Barbara? <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's looking at your cat and when we talk to somebody interesting. But so, so the cats, the guests, and us, she can take our leave. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, yeah. Barbara. It's okay. It's all right. We don't mind. So I've got a, I'm just going to park us about there. I think I can do that there. And uh, yeah, let me show you Abyss first, Tim. So this is Abyss, double click, boom. Now the thing I like about these newer plugins now, in fact, I'm gonna shrink us even more, Tim, is that you can resize a lot of the new plugins. Now I think it's because they're mainly like VST3s or whatever, but this is wicked. You can just resize it like that. That's cool. You probably think that's nothing, but no, when you use these- No, get it out of the way, especially if you've got multiple stuff going on. Yeah, and then, and... you know, if your eyesight's uh, <laughs> on point like mine, you just think, I just need to see that clearly without doing the, you know, the uh, I've got a Mac and I can zoom in, which is great. Anyway, let's do this. So I thought the quickest thing to do is just show you. Um, there's loads of mad sounds. If I click, this one's called Blade Sneaker. See what they've done. Blade Sneak rather than Blade Run. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. this was under, I don't even know what it was under. So I'm going to go back to it before I get lost. So I found this one. And it, to be honest, for this, it's pretty standard. Like the, the, the others are all really out there. But I thought if I start with something that you can kind of recognise, this we kind can of see where it goes from. There. You think, okay, it just sounds like a synthy thing. And then, but the thing is, like I said before, it's quite visual. So this here, it's kind of like live in the fact that you see down here at the bottom, a little question mark, tool tips. And if you do that, you can sort of see where you're hovering over. So these Pearl, Regular, Hollow, and Bermuda are actually, Pearl is like Shimmer, similar to like the what, Hybrid Reverb Shimmer. What's Bermuda? Show me what Bermuda does. You want to see does. what Bermuda does? All right. What, Good question, Tim. So Bermuda is Phaser. I like phasers. So, so you can see it's pulsing up and down there. That's the uh, LFO that's flashing. So when you do it, you can see what it is. I've just figured, I just figured all this out today. I've not read the manual or anything. So that's moving there. And if you go over here, you can increase the amount of the LFO, or you can go up here and it calls it a burger menu, which I really like. <laughs> um, it says select from a selection of LFO curves. So click on this. Can you see the curves? It's yeah. all about the curve. I'm just going to move it over. Hang on one sec. Let me get rid of the, the zoom thing. Hide. Hide. There you go. Right. So move this over here so you can see it. So, yeah, these are the... Um, <coughs> let's play a note again. So you do this, and you can go over to the LFO, and you can select one of these curves. If I press something like this, it moves in that pattern. That's ace, that. Yeah, I like it. I mean, it's, it's the, the, the visual aspect for, for an idiot like me is great as well, because it... it it just makes it reaffirms that I know what it's doing. That I'm clicking the right buttons, kind of thing. Exactly, yeah. So you can do that to all these mad wacky sounds now. And Pearl, this is kind of like a, sh a shimmer, like a. So again, I can. So it's quite easy to get a bit of movement, yeah. Yeah. And you're thinking, yeah, okay. What about this, though? If you remember, I showed you XO by XL and Audio, where yeah. you can sort of move around and select different, in, in XO's case, it's like different kicks and different snares, and you can drag an, a one near it. But listen to this one, you get this. And it's like a sort of focus ball. I like that. That's cool. That's very cool, right? And 
can you see all these little grainy things going at the top here? Yeah. So this, you can drag and drop timbres from the edit panel. I don't know how. And you can get it to do crazy things. I don't even know what you do, but I'm just doing it. <laughs> you get the idea though, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so if I just go, so that was one, like a, a preset that I thought was easy to see where I'd got from. But if you yeah. go to, you got drones and what did I use? Oh, this one, yeah, Atari, which is. Yo, Atari. So I'm moving the mod wheel there. Controls cut off. Yeah. I like it. Fun, isn't it? So yeah. there's the arpeggiators, all that kind of stuff. You can set the scales and things. Um, and yeah, so pads. There you go. Just just check one of these. I'm just going to press one key. Like I'm in straight away. You know what I mean? I'll do that thing again. That's that's ace. I'm loving it. So you got that. So there's your. I like that squid. Yeah, like squids the, are good. I get it. I get it. I get it. Doing some. Get it to sink. There you go. It's squidding away. Even a bit of that. I think because I've got it, it's, it's on the different edit mode. I think it works in a different way. Let me just try that. It's cool though, isn't it? You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. I've not had much chance to spend time on it, but yeah, 90 day free trial. Just get in and just. How much is it after that? Do you know, sir? Oh, it's about. It, it is. It's. It's not offensive. But it's about 120 quid or something like that. Uh, right. 120. Uh, GDP. G, G. Pounds. So I don't know what it'll be in euros or you know dollars, but it's fun though. I'm like. No, I like it. Yeah, Very I much. mean, you know, a bit of that. You can see there. It's like the phaser's really cool actually. Have it. I, th I think I think one of the main things I like about it it helps that you're taking me through it kind of thing. But, yeah, um, it's you can see, can't you? Though it, you can see what you're doing. Yeah. Whereas f for me, sometimes I go into some of these uh, VSTs and it's like uh, these plugins, and I'm just clicking, I'm moving buttons that, that I don't know what they do, but they look like they might be interesting. Yeah, and exactly. Where, where, whereas that shows you what it's doing completely. Yeah, exactly that. Watch this one key. <laughs> it just nuts. <laughs> so fun though, aren't they? Yeah. Shade the like rate. There you go. Bit of bit of Bermuda. Yeah. On this the um this is like delay as well, this one. And they're like, there's all different types, dense and scatter and stuff like that. You know, I'm not exactly sort of um, selling it as such as what it can do, but more like, it's just, you can see things, can't you? It all makes sense and I just kind of like it. There's even a panic button at the top there. If it, if it all goes a bit west, click that and it'll just stop making sound and you can, you know, if you're getting some sort of crazy <laughs> feedback loop. But honestly, some of the presets are just magic. Honestly, I can't just have a go, honestly. Go do it. And there's okay. definitely a lot of uh, references to sort of drones and robots and atmospheres and space things. So, yeah, get involved. Fiddle. I'm going to have, have the, a fiddle. The, uh, that was the um, modulation wheel on the keyboard, listen. <laughs> So yeah, abyss. I like D it. Dive into the abyss. 
What was yeah. the quote again? If you look back at it long enough, it'll stare if back you, at if you. If you stare long enough into the abyss, the abyss will stare back into you. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's been cheeky looking at me, so. Mm. I think, um, yeah, potential. So I'll um, I'll do something with it. So I only sort of like found that last minute, but I thought, yeah, it's worth a mention. So that was uh, something. But what I did do is um, I reckon it, I probably spent about 15 minutes with the um to be fair i had opened this before um so this is uh, this is all from the extended sounds by mode selector so everything on the screen apart from the abyss in fact i'll delete the abyss so you know it's not that everything from here now just is... before we completely leave the abyss sorry to interrupt yeah. you side um mho said uh that would be great mapped to an xy pad <laughs> which yeah, is it, is it capable of that? Do you know? Because I know you've not played well, with it. Well, oh, hang on. If I just Command Z, yeah, because it's um, because it's um, VST. Everything there, you see this on my screen. I can yeah. zoom in if you cannot see, but all of these things here can all be mapped because it's able to live. And if I press Configure, if I move any controller now in fact i mean i'm just going to map one to a key there click that boom or whatever i've got oh, i've not set it up to do that but anything can be mapped within here you know so uh can i do no i've, I've not actually set me this oh don't keyboard so, today. Don't. but yeah basically uh anything that lights up blue there can be mapped including um anything that you can configure here so let me just go out of that so when you press configure if you move, click one of these and move something, your controller will take over. I've not actually got anything set up to do that at the minute. But yeah, you can. So nice. yeah, a anything that you want can be mapped. I mean, you've got the XY here. So if you choose, if I just go there, just all the Ableton um, plugins like this, especially the VST3 ones, you can, you can assign that to one of those. So like phaser rate, bottom left and you know lfo two rate so when you move this if you look at the screen on the right there now around here you can see it when i yeah. move this controller this xy it can it's map them. to so you can move them s straight away doing that and then nice. yeah this just honestly you will have a lot of fun i guarantee if you're making any kind of music i mean you can make that even though they're all sort of ambient and long and things you can side chain them and make them fit into techno or drum and bass or anything it's wicked honestly just go Joe, all i can do is just go that's cool go and check it out but whilst i was in that zone i just tried it out and then i thought well i'll quickly explore through the um extended sounds pack and i found this one straight away and i thought i just started playing the same kind of chords that i was doing so i just did that whatever that is yeah a bit of an f f minor vibe going on there um, and I just played it, and, and it felt right. So I did that. I'll just uh, I'll just play what I miss. Sound. I like that. I knew you would. So that is a wavetable, and the, the key thing about these um, mode selector patches is that. All the sounds are in Live 11, apart from their own samples. They've sampled their own drum machines and stuff like that. But everything in here is what's already on offer to you, but it's how they've done it. And I've clicked on a few things and thought, I don't even want to open it up. I don't want to know how they've done it because it's basically things that I know how to do, but they've done it their way and it's cool. So I'll show you one in a second. It'll make you laugh because it made me laugh. Um, so. That pad was there straight away, right, right, I'm using that. So I'll play it, but the good thing about most of these is they really, <coughs> really made good use of Live 11 because of all the um, macro variations. Amazing. It's the, be it's the best thing that I've seen so far that someone's done a, a pack, like an artist pack, because they've gone in and done their thing and they've even put automation on drums and things. So when you move through them, they've actually like made it more organic and not static you'll see what i mean anyway so this is just the first one and i made my own variation so i wouldn't lose it because i thought i like this sound and it's i think it's like one of the, the first two but i'll just show you what i mean Move that. 
So if I move these, slightly different sombra. You know, same card. Interesting that though, isn't it? I like a bit of evil organ. Yeah. So, you know, you've got all the usual macros and some interesting ones. So I thought, okay, there you go. F minor, that'll do. Um, so that's just straight out of there, just literally under instruments, pads, that was, wasn't it? Pads. Oh. Glad Beck. That'll be getting used by <laughs> many people. So the next one, this one. Now, hopefully, if I right mouse click, I can show where I got it from. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I think it was an arpeggio or something. Let's have a click and find out. Oh, this is what I think you'll like, Tim. It's made me laugh. So, so you can see uh, plenty of tweaking, making full use of the 16 available macros. <laughs> but again. I sort of like, I messed around with them and I saved mine down the bottom by pressing new and just give it a sly one so I knew I could get back the sound because you can just kind of, you know, get lost. So this is just, yeah. uh, I think I just left an F note, right? So just an F note being uh, just one note just played for 16 bars, as you do, so I could just tweak it. So this is... So I think this one came from, what is it called? Lyacaston, I think. Yeah, there it is. So that's one of their uh, racks. And I'll just... I think it's the fact that it's like got such good variation and tweakability in one patch. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Same notes. Yeah, that's... So th this is the main culprit. There's two different instruments, really. If I move between one and two... You can hear like That's chorus. That's very cool. That's the one I went with, something like that. Yeah. What's it remind me of that? I don't know, but it does. It, I, I don't know whether it's I don't know whether it's something from uh, A Hans Zimmer performance, a live one. It's very cool, that right? live one. I'll show you what I came up with anyway. For me. Oh, hang on, before I do, there's one thing, right? I'll just play through the sounds now instead of talking. But <laughs> on that one there, I turned it off, but any of uh, my German uh, friends on here, please do correct my German at all times. But this one here, Einfach Dicker, means a little fatter. <laughs> 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 so it basically means, um, yeah put some weight on so if we just play this one this is great now this is what i said before about oh, i think james is coming to rescue us already <laughs> I oh, just, it? it must be really shit oh, he's <laughs> oh no no he's on time he's on time is it? i think what we'll do is i'm gonna i'm gonna let him in because i think i should show you the rest of what i've been doing and we'll see what james thinks yeah so here we go great. here we go this is a, an unusual welcome for us but this is how we roll is he there? James is here. Hello, James. Yes, James. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Crazy Northern Mad Men Show. Good to be here. Good to be here. <laughs> so, welcome to the show, first of all. But we decided that I'm just going to show you the rest of this track that I've been doing on um, the new pack. Which Have you tried this yet, James? Because I know that you're... Uh, you, you're you can No, uh, I haven't had a chance yet. yet. Ah, Even well, though it's half term, but it'll be on the list. Well... It, it will after you've seen how, how I can make this sound musical by throwing a couple of uh, just suspended held notes for 16 bars. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is, it's, it's cool. I'm t I just, yeah, so I'm just going to play, play through this to show Tim what I was doing. So this is something I did this morning before I uh, started answering emails and such. And uh, it took me about 15 minutes, honestly. But um, a lot of the racks... I just stuff that you would already use, but 
the way they've used them, sometimes extreme or sometimes really subtle. And this one's called Einfach Dicker, which, which I believe is a little fatter. I so, like its name. Yeah, Einfach Dicker. So I think that's right. So I've put it's off at the moment. Turn it on. That's on dry wet nine. I've got a limiter on the master, don't worry. <laughs> so, you know, it works. That says. It pushes it a bit. It does exactly what it says on the tip. Yeah. So I've got this little bass line. This is interesting, Tim. Should we go an octave lower though? Go on. I'll go an octave lower. There you go. Does that come across? Yes. Alright then, I'll bring some drums in. <laughs> but first of all, we need to make it a little fatter. A little fatter. I'm fat dicker. Yeah, here we go. With this this is without the fatness. I'll just bring it in. You just need it a little bit fatter, don't you? That's a t-shirt, I've got the layer one. <laughs> a little fatter. <laughs> so these, if I right mouse, mouse click, will it show? No. So these are. Um, MHO was just putting the chat. Sold. <laughs> oh, okay, good man. Sweet, well, sweet Yeah, honestly, no word of a lie. Fifteen minutes. Got all the kids sorted this morning and then just went, go on then, I'll have a quick go. And um, so once you get that, if I bring it in in layers now, the only thing, uh, yeah, so the, the drum parts are from their drum racks. And honestly, they are mega. If you look at um, this one, I think that I'll just solo this. Um, this one here, this fascinated me, this James. So you'll get this. You can see the... Um, for the, the people who are watching on the stream, I've zoomed in all this so you can see. But if you watch the redux and the high pass frequency and the pitch, they've all been mapped um, differently. Oh, hang on. No, not now. Um, they've all been mapped differently. So if I go into the clip, and these are from their kits. I just got this from Drum Racks. What's it called? BRD kit. You can see it's, I don't know where I got it from, but it's down here somewhere. Um, oh, no, that's the rack, not the kit. Yeah, anyway, you can... You can experiment with that. But if I press play on this, you could. If you look here, look at like the redux is going crazy, like every so often. So if I go into the clip and then go, for those of you thinking, mine doesn't look like that, I'm using the 11.1 beta. So um, if I go into envelopes here, you can choose this view now if you want to kind of have it vertical or horizontal. Uh, you can change it in view at the top. Uh, there. View panels vertically, horizontally, arrange automatically. So I've just got mine on vertical for now. It gives me more space. Um, f so if I click on the uh, envelopes here, you can see anything that's orange has been automated. So if I go to pitch, uh, what was it? Oh, and it was uh, Redux, wasn't it? Redux, yeah. And you can just see, there you go. <laughs> We're off. You know, so automation to bring th stuff out, but no matter what you, um, you know, you put, you could just play your own kit now and, and do all the same things. But I think it's pretty smart that because if you listen to that now, you've got this. Choose a different kit, with a different sound. Naughty, isn't it? Yeah. So right. obviously, if you want it to just be that little bit fatter, <laughs> I've already got it on that one. <laughs> so, yeah, so I'll just play through what I did. So 
just to show how easy it is, let's make 16 bars. Make something so I can mix it out and play it as I'm going to sleep later. <laughs> or it'll make me go to sleep. So yeah, let's start with the, um, the arpeggio from before. And then we'll get off because we're eating into James Tuck time. But let's do it. I'll hit record. Get the idea. It reminds me of the interstellar theme, that's what it is. Yeah. Still haven't seen it. Which is which is great. the demo <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's all right isn't it have fun there you go one minute 30 of uh just jamming on that love so, it yeah love it you in i'm in yes all tim's in. in so let me stop this screen share yes james suck is in the house yes james how are you and welcome <laughs> welcome I'm to the good these. is that guinness sir it's like a brew dog Stout. Stout. Oh, stout. So we like stout. We like stout. As soon as it starts to get dark. <laughs> diet, it's, diet is, that, is that every evening? Is it, well, well, just well, in general, as soon it, as it gets, it gets dark. darker earlier. <laughs> yeah, the well, stout comes out. <laughs> the stout comes out. <laughs> when the moon comes out, <laughs> the stout comes out. That's, uh, but it's also quite fitting, isn't it? That it's um, this weekend, the clocks will go back an hour to just remove more daylight from from your evening yes. but you know it's a gateway more to stout, christmas <laughs> so james you are now one of i mean i have to be careful how i say this because because i'm one as well so it's kind of i'm i'm I, I want to lift you up and celebrate you are now one of the eight new ableton certified trainers in the uk Congratulations, well done man pal. nice one uh, thank you thank it's you what an up. awesome bunch of people as well <laughs> yeah and the certified trainers as well they're cool yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. I haven't had a chance to meet them properly yet. But yeah, that's so weird. So you were the first b batch to do it online, which is um, a sign of the times, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. But well done, man. I mean, obviously I know what it's like, so well done. And welcome to our crazy show, which celebrates the fact that you're now one of uh, the certified trainers. But the thing is, you're not just a certified trainer. Well, obviously, no, the others are as well. They've got whole lives going on and stuff. But particularly for you, what's impressive, I think, more than people like realize is that you are a full-time te music teacher, head of department in a high school, which uh, yeah. deserves an accolade within itself. <laughs> and um, Tim might tell you stories about when he was doing music at school <laughs> and his music teacher. But we'll see. We, we, we'll have to see. We'll see if that. <laughs> we'll see how this. We'll see how this unfolds. But you know, for those people who are looking for a bit of drama, don't watch EastEnders. Watch this because it's gonna get. It's gonna get dark quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's gonna get off and found in a pub or something. Yeah. So now, James, just to start us off, for for me, what are kind of the. Um, what, what's the criteria and what's the process that you have to go through to become a, an Ableton certified trainer? It's a secret. It's a secret. Is it, is it, is it like, a, is it like the you. Masons? Is it something like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, a bit like that, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. What's this Masons? What, Perry Mason? The, the Freemasons. No, uh, not which Perry Mason. Mason. Uh, Mason um, who did that song, um, 
Classical no, Gas. What's no, he called? No, not him either. The Freemasons. <laughs> Who's the guy that did Classical Gas? Do you know that guy? He's called Mason, isn't he? I don't know. Or is it don't know him, Finn's either. friend Mason from primary school? You, you, you've left me and James <laughs> behind here. <Yeah. laughs> I bet there was like an advert on on Facebook, like on social media feeds and stuff like that. So just from there, just applied. And then as Simon says, the rest of it is shrouded in absolute mystery and the threat of death yeah. telling other people. <laughs> No, I mean, just, just in, 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 you know, not to put anyone on the spot or anything, but it is kind of, you have to go through a process and you have to already be doing things already. And as I explained, you know, um, James is teaching high school students and Ableton are offering free Ableton Live intro for high school students. And he was a school using Ableton Live for a big part of your curriculum, yeah? Which is what you're going yeah. to talk to us about, you know, which is... Yeah, I mean, like, for me, it was that insane thing about how we obviously met in the first place of, um, like, compared to like, other, you know, music software, it's more difficult to be in touch with the people that actually make that software. And yeah. um, with Ableton, it was just one of these cool things we were running, and um, still do, the one of the BTEC courses. And the um, it's a kind of a standard that you should have contact with industry. So... Uh, I tweeted and emailed a whole bunch of different people expecting to hear nothing back from anybody. And it was, it was actually f far from it. I heard back from quite a lot. So I think particularly because music education has been very much like pushed aside um, with the current government that we have. Yeah. And um, so not want to go political, but yeah. So with Ableton, it was just one of those things where they said, oh, you know, we'd love to get in contact, be able to have a chat. And that's how I met Simon and, you know, come and visit the school and then from there, like, it just really kind of blew up. I guess it was a crazy kind of yeah year and a half. Definitely. I mean, it's the one thing that, you know, like, Tim can probably add to this about music teaching in, in high schools and what it was like, but, um, you know, the amount of people that have said, because, like, James has done this, this thing that any, any of you that did GCSEs in, in the UK... Um, James basically made this guide that the exam boards, the people who give all the qualifications out, have said this is cool. And it's basically how to get your GCSE qualification using Ableton Live and Push or Launchpad or whatever. And um, how to perform on it. So straight away, young people that have been brought in to high school never played a traditional instrument. But, you know, you put drums in front of them or something where they can find their way around and all the music comes out of them. And this is, we're moving towards a time where these people won't be missed because they've not had the opportunity uh, to play guitar, piano, drum kit or whatever. Cause that's, that, that's a start, James. Because, I mean, my, my music class, if I remember <laughs> it, um, was, was, we, there, was a, there was a few people that had obviously chosen it just because they thought it was going to be a DOS. Um, but but there was <laughs> <laughs> there was some there that were would probably if they had something like that and if they could earn their GCSE via something like a push yeah. um, would, would have would have, would have absolutely loved it but because they didn't have the instrument behind them it, it was much more difficult for them the way that it's laid out um, or it I mean, was like, when I did it for us it all came out through COVID because um, we wanted to still be able to do singing with our classes for me like singing is the most Im one of the most important things that can do in a class um cool for access and like you know every musician wants to you know if you want to be able to be able to explain a musical idea to someone being able to sing it to someone straight away who can then play it the best the best way forward and it builds a huge amount of self-confidence and so on and so on but yes. um to, to have enabled that the the rules were that you could only have 15 people singing at once while it was you know covid was really kicking off through schools and stuff when we when we first started to come back anyway, and um, was it was it was that a restriction purely on the singing, James? So that you could have more than fifteen people in the same space, but not more than fifteen singing. Exactly, and oh. the space had to be a certain size. There was a weird kind of thing about <laughs> saying you had to know the amount of volume of air coming through, and uh, oh, I was yeah. like, you, seriously, oh, God, God, and people God. like, how are you going to work that out? It's just like. We'll just open a door and open a window. We'll, we'll it doesn't okay. matter how you work it out, James, because the bureaucrats have decided that that's a good idea. <laughs> Let me measure it. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> as part of that, because our class sizes were 24, um, we needed to make sure that 
12 kids could sing with a teacher while the other 12 kids were doing something else and as part of that that was um we used uh, melodics with those other 12 where it teaches them how to be able to play a keyboard or like pad based drumming and you can do um midi drum kits you know electric drum kits with it as well but um so the cool thing was is that also i had the like, kind of foresight to say that we're going to go into lockdown again we need something to do for the online lessons that allows kids to work on their own pace because you know what it's like in a music class you might have some kid who's been playing having private lessons for like eight years or something like that and somebody who might every now and then listen to a piece of music if they're forced to at gunpoint hmm. so it was that it's like kind of eureka moment of there were kids in the class that were becoming inspired about doing pad based pad based drumming and um and i thought they're really good at it too like there was one kid and I, it was just like amazing seeing how he engaged with it straight away and so i thought well what can he do if he then turns around to me one evening and says you know for the uh, open evening and says i want to be able to do gcse music and quite often we'd we'd tend to with students like that push them towards either like keyboard playing or like singing or something like that but so i thought well there's room in the specifications to be able to allow this to happen so let's go for it and that's what you know this cool thing's been about really and um yeah really excited about it yeah really hoping that some people take advantage of it so and they shall with that in mind now i know that you did this thing so any of you use ableton live already you know about the drum racks and on push and launch pad as well you can kind of move you can have 64 pads at one time and if you use a drum rack theoretically you can have two <coughs> lots of 64. so james did this thing where i was doing some work with musical futures up down the country <laughs> that was me um when you were talking before i moved the screen across because you know the um ein fach dicker um it was making so much noise can you hear that it's like proper analog dirt, which is great. It sounds like a cable's unplugged. It's currently making uh, nothing fat. Yeah, it's making yeah. it probably more annoying to those people at home. So when you when you were speaking, then I just went and did it. So everybody saw it, was watching on the replay, obviously. But yeah, so um, what James has done, uh, we're working with the uh, musical futures up and down the country. There's ten schools from. Edinburgh and Falkirk all the way down to Penzance, isn't it? Some, uh, yeah. Southwest, as far as you can go from the bottom Southwest to like, you know, not the top of Scotland, but 10 schools up and down. And then we were, we were working with them to do stuff. And James made this, uh, well, I'll let you talk about it because it's, you called it Jungle Vine, yeah? Yeah, so. Tell me about um, it. This, is this great all came too. about from when I was on a training with, um, Musical Futures, like you said, and you, yourself and Max Wheeler did uh, a session getting a load of people around push. And one of the, like, the common things that I tend to hear in schools is that you maybe only have like one or two, three units. Mm -hmm. How do you then do that with a class? And one of the things I'm really keen on anyway is to not see that computer is just single user experience mm. and try and get the idea of being able to work musically in, in groups ensembles and things like that so i thought okay let's take that idea and take it to try and teach quite a few things at once and try to make it a fun performance aspect so the, the point of this work was to not record um in live what they were doing that they were using live as a live performance tool yeah and so what i did was uh chopped up uh, the amen break just on this bottom left hand side <laughs> get the idea yeah. and then on the right hand side over here i've got two different bases on a c minor uh, c natural minor scale so you can layer those up quite nice to get that kind of reese bass kind of feel into it as well hello um so to have those two <laughs> ideas there then on the left hand side it's a series of uh, like synth sounds and so that's chord one, chord two, chord four, and chord five of C minor. 
and mm. then on the top right hand side i chopped up uh, marvin gaye's um heard it through the grapevine don't you know that i heard it through the grapevine that much longer would you be mine so you get the idea of that so the whole point of this piece of work is that you have like four students all around one push working out how they can build the parts together so you know it's it's been like a first lesson getting their head around the drum break then see if they can you know add like bass with it you get the idea mm -hmm. and yeah, then man. working out what chords will then fit with that and then being able to put the vocal part on top which is probably the most difficult one of, of knowing how the rhythmic elements of each pad works yeah you'd have to learn learn like what each button's gonna do by spending time with it first mm. kind of thing. exactly and then you know one of the things that we then try and encourage is like once we've got that there's also um across the macros i mean you can probably see it better on live here um, yeah actually but... if, you, if you stay in that area i could i can zoom in on that um all right okay if that's how it goes out so if you tell me what to zoom in on on the just yeah, on the go. drum rack yeah so it's, it's not quite you, so we've got a cutoff set up for that which happen goes across everything globally um so i'll just quickly demo that So that's all there. Um, redux as well. Can't be a bit of redux. We know that, um, know they it. can transpose the Amen break as well. Bit of auto panning just to kind of chop it up between the two headphones. And then they can look at the um, volume controls as well for all the different four parts of, of the piece of music. Oh, there you go. So that's like and a little mini mixer then there, isn't it? For yeah. The... And, and there's like different keys on the keyboard that are all set up as well to be able to... Um, so if you press C, it adds like a chorus effect. Uh, probably won't work now. Of course it won't. One sec. Oh, you mean you've mapped those two effects using the keyboard? Ah, yeah, so it. they can turn them on off. And like there's a delay they can turn on. If they press F, for example, they can disable the filter. So if they want to be able to change the position of the filter and then activate it to then turn it back up. It's trying to cover everything. And even like there's like in the piece of work there's things for teachers that are shortcuts so quite often students love to like jam the volume all the way up to start mm. distorting it so they can just walk around and i think it's either l for limit that just brings it all back down again awesome. um so they had literally everything there uh, button press away because like most of the time for any staff it's because it wasn't the whole point of this was not to be just for me and my school it was obviously part of music part of musical futures so yeah as well as creating this, I was like, oh, not everyone's going to have a push. Not everyone's going to have a launch pad. So yeah. I've also designed a version of this that works across um, MIDI keyboards. And so that all had to be remapped as well. So ah, the C yeah. minor scale is actually over s the notes of C minor rather than yeah. it working chromatically like it would do in the drum rack. Yeah, I, I get so, that, yeah. Yeah, so, so it's a really cool thing to do. It's mega that. I mean, I know that, you've we, we've you've got video footage in your department but we probably couldn't play it on here and i didn't even ask you but i've seen this happen with like <laughs> four <laughs> it was like four, four of your like class playing around and looking going this sounds good this <laughs> you know that kind of, <laughs> Shit, it's, me. it's me and i'm actually sounding cool but so c could i ask because one of our obvious uh friends of the show and uh freq frequent special guest ned rush um designed a drum rack that would um you know kind of help with the the, the launching and keeping it in time did you uh use similar uh ways of doing the the amen break to do that so you or can it go out of time or you know just i'm interested, interested I mean, in how you set it up to launch the uh the, within the drum rack i mean i just set it up in simpler to be honest and right. just like chopped up beat by beat and um, I wanted them to be able to get a feel of actually playing, right? Playing the sample rather than it. Like, if when if I was to work with a class and they're finding it tricky, I would just say, okay, we'll just play like play that on the beat. Yeah, because that's slide. You can't go quarter. wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then just saying to other people, well, if you want to be able to extemporize that a bit more, um, you know, put some like kind of snare kind of detail and so on and so on that you can um but yeah you just break down the task depending on who's doing it really and also um if anybody watching this 
now or later um, wants to get hold of this set how could they do that um, they could just message me like the, the, there's my contact details on the Ableton website so everything's yeah. on there I was going to say that we, we normally um, plaster everyone's stuff in YouTube but this is a good time to actually say Ableton certified trainer in the UK just go there and you can get your details off the page yeah I did show yeah, your page at the beginning of this um, so let me just I'll, I'll just stop the share uh, yeah just for now if that's yeah. all right because um, we don't want to put you on the spot to performance but you were doing pretty well there so um, <laughs> I'm, I'll just put your um, your details on there so people can see what we're talking about so let me just check because on the browser I've actually got you guys so I just need to move it across James took certified trainer and it's okay you're not, you're not wearing the same hoodie it's always one of them things isn't it like oh I'm wearing the same hoodie as the picture you're not <laughs> <laughs> what's on simon's browser what's on simon's browser is what james is tuck browser? it's james tuck there so we can um before we get into the next section we can uh just have a look at this and just go oh yeah we'll ask you about that and uh yes because this is the bit the right this is the bit that i want to know more about is when time allows he creates music under the name verona push so obviously we need to talk about that because you're obviously doing great things in the classroom, which is uh, here and here. Making so high school music lessons cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, well done, cool. James. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not sure if I can. Oh, there I can. So there you go. That is the email you want to do if you want to get hold of James. But just go to James's um, area on our CT page here, which is just ableton.com. And then you just certified trainers. It's at the bottom of the page. And you can get onto it, and it automatically um, shows you the CTs in your area, uh, certified trainers in your area. So do check that out. I would do that. So with that in mind, James, I'm just going to put us back on here. Um, let's talk a little bit about this Verona push doings. What's this Verona push? Where's the name come from? All right, because okay. that's, that's interesting. Because that, because and, and, and I'm guessing there's an interesting story, and. Aside from all this, we, we could see on your uh, profile you came back being, a, 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 how would you say it, chorister? Yeah, yeah. Chorister. So you, you were in the choir as a youngster, which I think Tim might be, might be able uh, to. I, I was in the choir as well, James. I was in the Lawton St. Luke's Church Choir. Choir boys. <laughs> choir boys. Choir boys. The I choir tried boys to, are here. I tried to my hardest to leave and my mother told me that I could finally have the pet snake that I'd always wanted if I went back and joined choir. So I did. But being a young man, um, she managed to palm me off with Tomb Raider 2 instead oh. of the snake <laughs> because I could go and get that the same day. She's a crafty oh, woman. This is a good choice. Mm. <laughs> so there you go. Choir boys. All right. And then, um, you know, this guitar, bass, you both got into guitar and so the more rockier side of music. So, but we, we've got something to play after that, that you suggested, James, that is definitely not rock music. <laughs> so we'll talk about yeah, that. I, yeah, I chose that on purpose. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so what, what, yeah. what I'm moving towards, to, just to tell you, I'm going to play the video um, of you performing in lockdown. It can't be real. So that's what I was kind of building up to with that there. So y you can explain from there onwards. about sort of after the choir bit, what happened next? Um, right, so like up to you playing on. this track. <laughs> oh, what do I play in this track? No, so no, we, play... you can just get us up to the point where you did in the lockdown stuff. This video I'm going to play. The um, right, yeah. So you asked that. first off where Verona Push comes yes, from. Yes, question so, number one. <laughs> right, so I'd finished like playing in a band with my mates at that particular point. Like everyone was having families and stuff like that, so it just wasn't happening. So I felt like taking a bit of a different turn with what we was doing. So like beforehand, it was like industrial kind of metal kind of stuff that we were doing, mm. which I still love. But um, mm. it was um, I wanted to do something different, and um, I really I was listening to a lot of Square Pusher at the time. Oh yeah, man, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and good. It was, and I thought, oh, I really well. Let's put the word push in there somewhere. And I was trying to work out what else to put with it. And I happened to be on a school trip as a teacher in Verona and I was oh, like right. there we go Verona push that kind of works and I obviously couldn't find anyone else that was using the name so just just went with that really um and it That'll was be. just like trying to go down a different vibe and, and like you say like the lockdown thing so for me like because I've 
got two young kids now and um trying to find time to be able to make music and perform music is is really tricky oh yeah um and i thought well <laughs> the kind of situation we were in allowed me to kind of explore the idea of being able to perform online um but i suppose being a teacher that's kind of nerve-wracking <laughs> particularly um like with social media and stuff like that yeah not that i'm bothered if kids see it or anything like that no it's just more of the point of that you know I, it's nice to have a bit of a private life i guess mm, in, in yeah, some yeah. ways um but uh, yeah, i was really keen to do it filmed it like a kind of test run and never put it out until i th- one night I thought, oh, do you know what? Let's, let's, we've had this conversation before saying yeah. you can have a load of music on your hard drive. No one hears it. And I thought, well, Make it's not it perfect. Exist. It's not perfect. So, but I don't care. Let's Good. get it out that's, and just see what people think. Well, exactly that. That's, that's one thing that Tim and I always talk about. It, it has to exist. If you don't put it out there, no one ever see it. No one can talk about it. No one can enjoy it. No one can like it. No one can not like it. You know what I mean? It just, it is better being out there. And it's like, yeah but let's just play it but anyway so this is recorded exactly where you see sitting yeah, right yeah, now yeah. And, it's where um, when when i was doing zoom classes kids used to get really nervous because they thought i was going to fall down the stairs <laughs> during like um <laughs> oh jeez, oh, mega mega all right well so just do you want to tell us anything about the song because obviously um i know you've got a live set that you can show us later with another song but um for this one um yeah, this it? song was really quite important, I guess, like for me using live because um, beforehand, at that particular point, I was using Logic and Reason together mm. okay. through re- Rewire. And um, I then thought more about using Ableton Live. I'd used it slightly before, but not properly. And then I really got... <laughs> so sorry. Sorry, my time's up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to turn sorry. the keyboard off. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, please continue, James. <laughs> so I got into the thing of like being able to be a solo performer and trying to get around that idea. And then live was the perfect way of doing it. So mm. like the version of It Can't Be Real that's on SoundCloud was the time where we'd been recording it and then I spun it into live to kind of get used to it and make myself have to do stuff with the software. So yeah, this track obviously samples... Um, like the Enya Fuji's. Is um, that what I was going to say that? So is it a sample or is it you recreating it? No, that's the actual sample, but it keeps getting repitched to fit with the song. I wrote the song first, actually. Yeah. And, but I kept, you know, I don't know if you like this, but like you're working on a track and you think, oh, this would work really well with it. And so I thought, you know, I'd throw it in and not care. Um, you know, just, yeah. If the Fuji's weren't bothered about ripping off Enya, I won't worry either. No, <laughs> no. Well, Tim and I could tell you stories about putting samples from very high-profile artists, and, and, no, no and one nobody's noticed. Knows. No one, nobody's no one knows. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, but maybe because not enough people listen, but, and if yeah. the eventuality <laughs> happens where you get done for it, it means lots of people listen to it. Which is not a bad position so, to be in, is it? So yeah, I and, say do it. Well, I don't know whether we should say, it, but I mean, and I, say, I the, say do it. The video that you're going to play was like me trying to experiment with ovox to try and do like live harmonies so to speak so yeah is that what you used? Than, i was going to ask that actually yeah rather than having to you know actually be my voice on the recording it kind of i don't know if it gave it to me some kind of legitimacy of rather than it just being backing tracks that yeah. everything's kind of happening right so that that that's what i was going to ask you so this was actually you performing it live including live effects and things like that the actual it is a performance that's it's kind yeah, of like it's not been working. edited at all like it was just through live and using uh ebo suite to do all the camera edits uh, there's only like two cameras but it was just to try and kind of get an idea of what i mean like it's not like i can do this space anyway but well um, creativity though mate because that's what you know we're trying to do like in this space or in anything it's just that's what you got to do so wicked let's just get it played and have a listen to it so this is James Tuck, and this is something you recorded right where you are now last year during the lockdown. That's it, man. Let's have it. So this is I Can't Be Real.
All right, James. Woo woo. Like it. Mr. Tuck. It's great. Good. So yeah, Thank I was you. just saying then puddle of mud that I've just remembered. <laughs> Put, like I, I was so I said it's got a bit of a stained vibe. There was kind yeah. of like late nineties, yeah, sort of vibe. Do you know what I mean? Stained. Do you remember them? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and put, outside and yeah, like that. yeah, and, and they were like sort of you could hear all the chords, but it was still heavy, you know, like it and melodic, and I thought it was great. And puddle of mud, that was the one I was thinking of. There's only, only as, as long as it wasn't the verse. Did you hear his thing of um, oh how yeah, butchered yeah. about a girl? <laughs> <laughs> it's like literally one of the funniest things you'll ever see. Oh wait, what was about a girl? Was it? Yeah, the, the, they he did, did a Nirvana cover. It was yes, horrific. yes, yes. It was. It was abs- It was painful to watch as well, wasn't it? Yeah, no, I, I, like, you, you have to watch. You have to watch. Uh, it looked, it it looked, a bit later. It's it, that it funny. looked like he was hurting himself. It was. It was. It was really, really <laughs> wow. awful to watch. Not just because it sounded shit, but because he, he looked like he was about to burst his vocal cords. It was. It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Well. Okay. Yeah, but no, I, just, I just I just meant the vibe. You know, when people say, like, "Oh, what's it sound like?" It, it just, it just... That's that's no slight on you, James. Yeah. <laughs> but we weren't referencing that performance. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so there you go. I was... make sure says lovely and perfect. By yeah. <laughs> Good comments. And and just before that, one thing that we just did see when we were playing that is um, Kelvin Black. So Kelvin, you might have to give us a little bit more info on this because. I'll interpret what you've put and see what you think, if this is right. So it says, can you set up the push with that layout and colours without anything other than push? So, first of all, the the layout itself, was it was the 64-pad uh, layout of the yeah. drum racks, yeah. Um, and that's your, your drum rack on live. So whatever you have on those pads... That was all made entirely of a drum rack, wasn't it, James? I and mean, you can drag, yeah. If you know live well, you can drag pretty much any instrument, audio effects, racks onto the, each one of those pads, which is amazing, and that's why people use it for this kind of thing. But color-wise, you can color them all, and in the software, and it shows up that color. Um, I'm not sure if you mean can you do it with another device like a launch pad or something like that, or whether you mean, well, I don't know. You'll have to answer that one. So. Um, I think that may give you an the, the layout is, is the layout of six, is a 64 pad view so if you do like in, on push if you do the uh, normal drum selector you have 16 pads and then 32 sequencer and then 16 bar selection in there so yeah may, maybe add some more to that um, Kelvin if you want to get you know there's, there's a two certified trainers here if we don't know we'll have to speak to the men in white coats or women in white coats so yeah any oh there we go can you can you color clips and instruments pads oh good evening milton how are you hey via push online yeah right yeah to 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 change the color of a pad on push you just hold shift down and tap the pad and then you could the colors all go around the edge um i can't demonstrate at the moment because i've got the camera on on the push um but yeah if if you if you tap if you hold shift down tap a pad or a channel and then the color ring appears on the push and you just pick one yes that's what you can do yeah so you can do that so it's about this time of the evening where there's there's only one real thing you can do really (laughs) sorry i'm on my own aren't i just uh we need to appreciate the groove and by as james (laughs) given us something to appreciate so <laughs> we'll be back shortly really. sorry about that right so James, tell us about this, this groove, <laughs> this <laughs> groove. Let me just get on what I've got because I'm having to play it from um, YouTube, this one, because this ain't on Spotify. <laughs> no, no. And tell us the like, story. So when, um, yeah, listening to music back in the 90s, you know, tapes all the way. And um, 
the nineties, like for me, like I know, like I'm biased, but it was a wicked time for music, and I remember hearing this tape of um, a Dreamscape gig and um, <laughs> DJ SS, of course, and like the intro to his set, and I was just like, man, I've heard nothing like this before, and it I blew my it. mind. And it's one of those things of like all of us. We, you know, we had like like two or three computers in the music department at school at the time that ran Cubase, and it's going straight into the drum editor, getting the drumstick icon and just programming like drum and oh, bass beats wicked. all day every day. <laughs> and um, That's for me, amazing. like this kind of track got just changed my mind about music basically because you know I was like, you know, ha- as you said earlier, I was like going through choral stuff, going into rock stuff in a big way, and then you hear this and it's like, yeah. Yeah. All right then. <laughs> so, I mean, I think you, you mentioned that you said about drum programming, and this is something that well it explains a lot why you know you, you're a good certified trainer and understanding the process because to program beats like this using Cubase and MIDI because it just it never sounded like it did it because oh, that's nothing like it at all. But yeah. like we would be like raving. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Mega. Oh, this, that's really good. So I'm going to play this and I'll, I'll have to play it from um, from YouTube, but it'll it'll come through here. So let me just hit this. And how, how much? About a minute and a half? How, how, just until we get the vibe, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's so good. All right, here we go. VIP! Quite... Sounds of the DJ SS in a place to be. All right. Right, sounds of the DJ SS. Sending out a big request to all the Dreamscape crew. <laughs> SS. People be, just be, do nothing. As we roll with the sound of the DJ. SS. though it's i think it's mega but this sounds awful than it the actual like <laughs> it is off a tape isn't it it is yeah, like yeah yeah oh wow that's uh well i've got to say good choice man <laughs> because <laughs> that's for like was, w- <laughs> something that's got a bit of a story and um yeah so you were all, like sort of wigging out at, at high school when that was I, I i'd obviously left high school by that time but it was just like not much longer but and it was just like i was when, like 15 16 years old hearing that yeah. and like Oh, yeah, it was wow. just insane, and wasn't it like '97 that um, Ronnie Size Ronnie Size represent it won you know, the Mercury? Like, yeah. It was such a cool period of time of hearing that music, and yeah, it being fresh, you know. Yeah, yeah, oh, it, it, it was fresh indeed. Yeah, <laughs> it was, and yeah, because I, I think I was at college or something, at, or by that time, you know, sort of that. That was, oh, I might have even been a bit, yeah, a bit further past that, but. Um, yeah, ninety-seven. And I th- this I'd is where I wish ten. <laughs> I mean, this is where I wish now, like where you've got who sampled and stuff like that, mm. because the cool thing about that music was, in the same like way that I got fell in love with hip hop, was because the stories behind the samples. Yeah. And just working your way back, and yeah. you know, it's quite cool, like especially working in classrooms where you might hear kids talking about a certain track, and you know exactly what samples are in there, and you you know you 
throw on the original and it throws them. Yeah, and yeah. They had no idea and they kind of feel like their music's been murked as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slipping in that, uh, yeah, that, yeah, exa exactly that. I, I can't help doing it though, but it kind of like, um, it's funny you should talk about that using samples. It's something we could talk all day about, but the um, recently, I only discovered like pretty recently. Uh, do you know Labby Sifri? Do you know he did? Oh a, yeah, 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 yeah. Must be love and something, something inside so strong. And and, all, yeah. and the um, Eminem. That's it. Yeah. So the, the Eminem one, and he's like, that song is just like it's got this breakdown. It's and and the whole of my name is is just lifted from that one break. But it's it's not just like a little bit. It's the whole thing, isn't it? And even the riff and everything. It's just like. Wow, but you know, yeah, I miss. And they also says, "I miss bowlers." Indeed, <laughs> man, indeed. But yeah, it's it's such so good, and and then to understand that, you know, sort of these these were real players playing it in the seventies and songwriters, and it kept the thing going, and now people just create in different ways. But yeah, that's a good one. But yeah, just that whole sampling thing. But then, when YouTube became even more popular, people just posted like videos of. Um, Daft Punk, which I've already had always had respect for, but just showed you where they lifted all the tracks from, and you're just there thinking, "Oh man, still love it though." <laughs> but yeah, it was just like, uh, "Wow, that is some clever sampling." So yeah, with and one of the kind of battles that I regularly have in the classroom is where kids say about, "Oh, you know," especially if doing stuff on live. No, you know what I mean, like about real music, and I just go define real music for me, yeah, and um. You know, and it's that whole thing that people go, well, I don't believe that um, auto tune is is right, and I'm like, but so if you don't believe in that, then don't use a compressor either. Yeah, don't use a reverb because it's not natural. It's not the real thing. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, I just don't, I just don't buy it. And but I always love it because when a kid says it, and you see the other kids around them go. Oh, man, that was a bad idea. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they know they've, uh, they've stirred you. He's got the answers. But it's good to have those he's, conversations, though. Yeah, yeah, he's got the answers. So with that in mind, I was going to ask you, uh, the next bit is, could you, we, we were talking before about getting ideas down, and I think we actually, just when we were doing a little check before you came on, you mentioned something that is in the next live set. So could you share the, the set? Now, this is something that you wrote this year not long ago am i right this one yeah 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 not too long ago i think it yeah about this time ish last year i, I, I kind of I, like you i've lost track of what's actually happened over the last yeah, year and is, a bit it is um, um blurry as puddle of mud <laughs> once said but the, the thing is is that um yeah trying to come up with ideas is i find more difficult now than ever and like particularly because of being a singer is my main thing you listen to this, Tim. As much as, much as I love, like, I, well, I don't mind instrumental music, but I, I love the hook of a vocal. Mm. Really important to me. Yeah, so hear, I hear. find it more difficult to write lyrics than ever before, particularly because, you know, when you're younger, you write with no fear. Mm. And the older you get, the more fear you get in your own writing and what you're saying and what you're talking about and all the other things mm. you come up with. But I always find that most of the ideas that I come up with come about the worst time. So like if you're in the yeah. shower, if you're driving to work or something like that. And quite often as a as a kid, like, you know, I would get this idea and I think, man, I'm in the shower. I've got to quickly run down and record this idea before I forget it. Because if I leave it any longer, it's gone. I yeah. won't remember. So I used to run downstairs and there was uh, in my bedroom there was uh, like a tape recorder with a microphone on it and um, I'd quickly grab a tape chuck it in <laughs> there press record and just sing into it or if there was an instrument I knew I could have to play it straight away bosh there we go record it in and I used to do that all the time and but it was all okay until a friend of mine goes oh man like I really want to be able to check that album out can I borrow it I'm like yeah go for it fill your boots no problem at all and like a week's gone by and he's like, oh, Tucky, like this is like a bit weird, but like <laughs> you scared the living daylights out of me because I listened to the album and then all of a sudden at the end, 
as you at the end going <laughs> do, 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 <laughs> do I mean? and like beatbox or something or whatever and um they're like oh, i can't believe this and i was like so after that i became a, like, a little bit more like protective of my tapes but, um, <laughs> so, so it says like the stuff that sammy gets sent from me on a regular basis and uh, we, we've got we got a track called first that was entirely written in the shower and it was one of them jobs yeah. where I was I was I was in the shower and I needed to finish having a wash before I could record it. So I had to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until I managed to get back to my yeah, phone and yeah. record it in. Totally. And so with with phones obviously now it's a million times easier yeah. oh, and like man, voice yeah. memos is just the way forward. So mm. it got to a point and I was thinking I've gotta write something and something's just gotta happen. And um so I thought what do I do? So I had a look through my phone and found an old recording of, uh, of like a, an acoustic guitar um, that I recorded. So I'll, I'll just play that so people yeah, know what, where it came from. and all right yeah is um, that from a phone then, that just recorded yeah, from, from a phone, phone. <laughs> have, have you have you got some something on there now though have you pimped it a little no, bit that's literally i've not pimped it to I, I just cut it that's all i did whoa isn't it that must insane be a, it's a good guitar then yeah no <laughs> Oh, it's man. just it's just a spawny recording i'd and, use um, that i'd use that as it is yeah. i mean so then it I came like to it. the point of thinking how am i going to record it in and you know working with the riff and when when i turned 40 last year obviously i'd already had my li midlife crisis in my 30s when i learned how to skydive oh my so Lord. there wasn't much more for me to good for me to do and um so i thought let's buy a seven string like let's do it let's detune a bit have a bit of fun and seven. so i decided to try and try this riff out on the seven string so but I had to whack a capo on it so yeah okay. this is like the song i'll just stop at points to like talk about various yeah, things wicked. that we did so <laughs> right so yeah so Basically, the whole track is based around that guitar riff, and I wanted to be able to look at ways of being able to try and maintain musical interest with just one idea because I didn't have time to come up with loads of different ones. So one of the idea. things I did with like the vocal, the lyrics, <laughs> like because I was struggling to write lyrics, are kind of all based around what was happening through lockdown. But the first bit, I couldn't work out how to start the song, and. Um, my watch used to have this app thing that said about take a moment to breathe or this yeah yeah other. yeah yeah i got that so this is where and i also wrote down about the structure of the piece about it starting slow and so i just use those lyrics start slow take a minute to breathe and so that all came from there really Wicked, um, man, this is and great. i wanted to be able to use i'd previously been using um what is it uh the the beat uh, not the beat repeating live, but the um, stutter edit from Isotope. Oh, yeah, yeah. Beat and I was struggling thing. to find one that fit. And I remember the show that Anna did at the time, actually, when I was writing it. And yes. she was like, oh, just create your own. I was like, yeah, let's stop being lazy. Let's do that. So I'll solo the vocal so you can hear it. But um, Start slow. Take a minute to breathe. Breathe out and don't listen to fear forever. So yeah, yeah man, that's cool. cool. That's cool. Well, I'll just whack it with the rest of the track. And then, yeah, so it was just trying to see about all the different layers that I could add on as I go. But I'll just let it run. And if there's something that you think... I just wanted to say before you press play that uh, shout, got, shout out to Anna there because I, I was going to mention before that we, we put um, a new video up on the channel that Anna did um and it's really good so if, if you're watching this on the youtube anyway you're already on the channel check anna's new video out it's um sound design using um simpler and uh, she gave you that idea but you've got fresh air on there is that on your master or on, on this channel that's uh trying to think 
um, crikey, that, is that on? Yeah, it's just on, on the, the right vocal there. bus. Yes. Anna told me about that. It was a free plugin, wasn't it? Yeah, for Slate. It's Slate. awesome. Yeah, exactly. So good tip that you can. Uh, I'll ask you about that in a sec. But yeah, just play it anyway, and we'll, uh, we'll yeah, talk. Yeah, I'll just go from here. Wicked. Forever me and never you. The times we never want. This bit here was just all about trying to layer synths and stuff like that. Yeah, I, like, I really like that rhythm that came in. That boom, de, 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 yeah, so de. that bouncy synth is really influenced by MF Doom. Uh, he's, he does like his tracks as like Vaudeville Villain. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Victor Vaughn, Vi Vaudeville Villain uh, yeah. album. And um, yeah, there's um, there's a track near the end of that album where it does that kind of effect. I was like, yeah, let's steal that idea. Good. And, um, but yeah, so then after that, it was just really about trying to layer synths on top of the sounds and really take it in a different way. And one of the things when I was looking back at the track is like looking about what I called things as well. <laughs> and what so like I've got one here called like Lynch synth, which reminds me a bit of like um, David Lynch oh, yeah. kind of sounding and stuff like that. I'll solo it because it's just so, there's not much there, but it just adds, yeah. So yeah, there's, uh, I'll solo the, actually all of the synths so you can kind of hear what's going on there about the vocals and guitar, just see like where I was trying to take it. Mm. That's cool. That bit there. Yeah, That's and really so, good. so quite a few of those is like using arcade. I found quite oh, yeah. helpful at the time. Yeah. Uh, I I don't use it anymore, but there's times when I just felt lazy, and I just thought, let's find something. I didn't want to be as lazy as just finding a loop. So you, it, it allows you to play the sample in a way like you play simpler, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was just, just I got, it's a know, vibe that something though. different, but um. Yeah, I'll just go from like there onwards, like with the Just before you really. do that, I just wanted to ask yeah. Tim: hasn't it got like a bit of an Oliver vibe? Just, just that yeah, without. Yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like Oliver Arnold's, where it's kind of like he's he's like neoclassical pianist, you would say, wouldn't you? Really, kind of like ambient, laid back sort of thing. But when he plays the more like techno stuff, it gets electronic, and it's just like really. It's, it's very, very similar sort of um, melodic motifs and kind of nice like that it's like an ambient vocal there isn't it like a sort of like a yeah, yeah speak that's that. um a native instruments um far light i think that yeah one is. I, I know that one yeah i mean it's just like you know th those like you just said it's like it, it's not a sample you're you're able to play with the textures and get them to play notes that you would have played on a piano or something so it sounds more musical so cool yeah, man, i really like, like it you know, in the same way that i feel like about sometimes i play a push as a pianist the reason why I love push sometimes is because I'm going to play note clusters or thoughts that I won't necessarily fall into oh. as a pianist. Oh, God, I, I completely understand that. I was having a, a little tantrum with myself <laughs> last night over uh, the exact same thing, playing guitar, because as, as soon as I get it out, there's... I, I, I was I was over-egging it because my, my mind was playing tricks on me, but it was like... Um, I, I feel like I'm just reverting to patterns 
and, and it's, yeah. it's not it, it becomes n- not even about what it sounds like it's 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 about the, what you're playing on the guitar what yeah what's under your fingers learned. and that's, yeah, yeah. that's always the cool thing with the guitar just <clears throat> doing like an alternative tuning and yeah. stuff like that always yeah. finds a great way out yeah as well yeah, yeah. yeah. And That's cool. It's great, mate. Some proper vibes in that. Yeah. And it's just like, just trying out different ideas. So the thing I really loved was being able to, with Live 11, the big thing for me was being able to do um, takes. Yeah. And um, that was a huge difference. And then once I had the takes how I wanted them, to then spin them into Melodyne. And then do a lot of the editing in there for the vocals, because for me, that's just... Yeah. So I, I tell tell us a bit it. about that because I always yeah, think I'll go back to the, the share. Yeah, I mean um, you could just, just just tell us like verbally as well. But so two things then you said that I'm interested in straight away. Because I know that comping was something that, that came in live eleven. And I hear a lot of people say, Oh yeah, it's miles better than that now. And, th- and when I ask them to, to explain why they use it, it's not really you could do that what they're explaining sometimes, some people I spoke to. You could do it already anyway. It's just a slightly different way of thinking about it. But how how do you use the comping in in a way that you didn't you couldn't do that before? What does it free you up to just keep letting it go? Or you know how does it yeah, work? Yeah, just like I would set up a loop region and just go let it run and run and run and run and run. And if there were bits where I'd had a particular problem pitching it or just not getting the right. Because obviously, when you're producing yourself, you're having to then go back and listen to it, and you know, yeah, it, it's that whole thing. So, um, then just being able to find a couple of bars where you could just work on it and just let right. it loop and let it run. Same with the guitar. I mean, the guitars were all done through that too, and using this, you know, just comping it all together. And, and um, do you get rid of everything else as soon as you've got the one? Do you get rid of it? No, I, I, I tend to just leave things there just in case. Hmm? Okay, good. Because I was telling because always like I get nervous <laughs> about if I change my mind. Like you know, like th- it's the beauty of like using DAWs, right? Is yeah, you don't have to, like so just keep it there and um, right. But yeah, so then spinning it into Melodyne. Ah right. Yeah, I love it. It's great. So what's the reason? Why do you why do you do that? Uh, for auto tuning yeah. and like being able to just even change the lengths of words or vowel ah, sounds, right. and I also do it to. DS as well. Mm. Take I cut all the breath manually as well, rather than using a gate because I just feel like it's. I don't want to have to rely on the gate settings to be correct. Oh yeah, we can relate to that. Yeah, cause and so just being able to go and delete them it is great, and you mm. can just go and chop the sibilance and turn it down. Whoa! So it's not necessarily that you're using it. You know, I'm. I'm. I mean, I know you can sing and you and you know what you're doing. So it's not necessarily just straight always a bit out of tune there this is like shaping the the performance characteristics almost yeah and and some of it is genuinely as well like pitching it to an end of its life just because i want it to be right yeah you know i, but I, I have no, as, as i said earlier i have no qualms of using auto-tune and um so like for example the um a friend of mine uh, uh, david Lale, we me and him have like been doing some stuff for oh sync. yeah yeah and um you know he's a he's a professional cellist in the London Philharmonic, and but still, I will put his cello parts into Melodyne and um, wow. tighten it up, and oh I'll tell man. him as well because if, if there's one bit and I just want that bit to be slightly longer, it's cool. And one of the things I really like doing as well is like there was um I haven't got it to hand, but there was a sample 
from a bit of choral work where I loved it, but one of the chords doesn't fit in the music. Oh. So the cool thing is with Melodyne is obviously you can go into it and it works polyphonically. So y- there was like a chord that was made major because it was a TS to Picardy, you know, had to end on a major chord. Oh yeah. But I wanted it to be minor. So I just spun it into Melodyne and then just changed, changed it to the B third. to a B flat <laughs> to make it G <laughs> yeah. minor. Hey. So Which is so it's so cool being able to do that. Cool it's it, yeah. insane. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean these I, I know like in sort of, you know, uh let's let's call them production houses, although they're not that anymore because it could just be someone's studio in there wherever. But yeah, I, I know like sort of when you start layering, layering you know, I remember the first example I heard of um what's the w- one called in Pro Tools where it is it beat a line and it just aligns a vocal line. Vocal line, yeah. So I know that um um, girls allowed actually it was girls allowed at the time and they were like they go in and they sang all the parts and they weren't always necessarily all together which kind of makes sense when you've got four or five and whatever but I, I knew it was we recorded the vocals and we basically got them all in and obviously they were never perfectly on time but they just put this plug in did it and it just literally lined all the vocals so when they sing it's perfect and i mean like perfect beyond human performance but it just kind of sounds like this big wall of voices and multi-tracking it and laying it and it's easier to mix and stuff like that so yeah but yeah just whatever sounds right for that song isn't it you know if you want to be raw and stuff then go all punk out and stuff as well which yeah and it's yeah it's using the tools for what it is that you want it to do always and you know not feeling like that you have to as well no no i think it's really good did did we got through all the song then, didn't we? But if we need to watch that again, or, or if we want to listen to it again, where where can we check it out? Because I'm definitely uh, going to have another listen. So Yeah, SoundCloud. That's on your song. It's the top one yeah, on your yeah. SoundCloud, isn't it? Yeah. That, yeah, th- yeah, probably yeah, one or two. But yeah. I, yeah. And I just want to, yeah. I'm hoping that, you know, I can start, you know, writing a bit more. And, you know, I was saying to you the other week that the band I used to play in before doing Verona Push, you know, I've started writing tunes again for that. And, yeah, that's been good fun. Good. Definitely, definitely. Just one quick thing as well. Um, our mutual friend, Martin, Mr. Emo from Down Under, hey. says good morning. He's, he's probably had his breakfast now and gone, but uh, yeah, let's l- big shout out to Martin there. We were just talking about uh, some of the things that you've been up to with James as well earlier. You'll have to rewind it. But yes, but I was going to ask Tim actually just before uh, we, we move on to the next and final part of the show. But um, Tim, h- do you feel better? Because I I certainly do. That asking James w- how his vocals sounded so awesome in that track because the, the harmonies were just like bang on. I'm just like <laughs> whoa, <laughs> man, it's just mega. <laughs> and because uh, you know, like Tim's obviously more vocals for what we're doing, but you know, I, I do sing on my demos to get the idea across. You sing and on the tracks as well. Yeah, backing vocals and that. You know, I'm, it's it's in there if you uh, call me back. But um, it is obviously that. And, and it was something you said then, James, about as you get older, it's harder to. What did you actually say? Now you see it's getting harder to. Well, you you d- you have more fear. I fear, guess, yeah. That writing, it. like as uh, y- I didn't care as a, as a nineteen twenty year old mm. what I was particularly writing, and I think yeah, there's no there's no some not so much risk involved. Yeah, uh, as yeah. there is as like a a forty one year old head of music. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Well. I, yeah, I mean, I, I said this to Tim that when um, Sleaford mods kind of w- were quite popular, I thought, well, that's that it's quite inspiring because the cu- you know they're older than me, and I believe in the music they're doing, and I mean, they got something, t- they've definitely got something to say, and I just think it's great, and the fact there's two of them and they just get on stage and do it, and I, you know, I'm quite happy to oh shit, to pay money and go watch them because I think they're great, and I've bought their album on vinyl and stuff. I just think right. It's cool, but it was quite inspiring to me to think, yeah, you just, they don't, they don't care. But they're obviously, I don't know if fear is the right word, but they're still conscious and aware that they're very lucky in the sense that people have got it. And then, but they did it the right way around. They started from really small and just gathered some serious momentum. So, yeah, I think it's I- inspiring as well that, you know, that it can be done. And that's what, um, and yeah, but that track is wicked and it's really good. And you've been quite, um, You've used the, the surroundings to inspire you, literally. <laughs> you know, like just 
you know so it's really good man really good thank you good and which kind of brings us to about songs this is of course the time of song stations which i think we're gonna have to make a jingle from so maybe i think we should have a collaboration ourselves get ned in there and we need a song versations jingle i think i think that's the one next okay you know that's the <laughs> next one so we won't go on too much longer because i have a prior engagement <laughs> soon uh so we're just going to um because it, it's it's been great james we've got so much we could dig into there like could ask you all with them plugins and stuff so i think this was the the first of um of many appearances and this is obviously the, the welcome as a ct because theoretically you could just have your own show on here whenever you want it's cool. your channel it's i mean that's the thing it's handing over the keys now it's kind of like hey it's your house too just uh <laughs> just tidy up after you you know <laughs> you know we'll don't, come and don't, trash it don't mate. drink yeah don't drink <laughs> too much of that there don't but yeah that stout, you know lad. so yeah it's your, it's your ct channel too so yeah if you want to just get on here and start doing live sh streams like this don't do it you know just uh so let's just shuffle these cards oh here's one and i think we can all have an answer to this because it does uh it's interesting how important is it that you and your significant other like the same music that's not important James. at all mm. me and my mister have completely opposite taste in music she's like into garage oh yeah loves that vibe what do you call it <laughs> two-step <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with you James I don't think it's important at all it, 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 it's nice that, that me and my missus have a bit of crossover because I know that some of the stuff I listen to I can fire it over to her and she'll appreciate and vice versa mm. but the, the vast majority of what I listen to she oh it's too heavy it's too heavy she would, if you, especially if you like your industrial metal, James. She she wouldn't be into that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I've yeah. got some I've got some heavy stuff on there. She won't listen to it. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Simon? Well, you see, you now I've got another side to this, right? So I understand because the question was, how important is it that you and your students like the same music? And the answer, I, 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 what James said, it's not important. Although it for for my um, when I met Jill. And like I asked her some question and something, she went, "Oh, you know, elaborate a little bit." And I went, "All right, and, um, what's what song, what bands are you into?" I think I said, and she named like five bands, and I'd seen four of them like live, and she hadn't. And the only one we hadn't seen was Daft Punk. I mean, I'm saying bands, musical acts, you know what I mean? And but we both watched Daft Punk together like years later, um, and that was at the uh, Wireless Festival, two thousand and seven, Leeds. Only two appearances that year of uh, Daft Punk, and they haven't done any since, I don't think. But yeah, it was it was wicked that we we had something in common that that made me think. Like she mentioned five bands, I think there were things like Foo Fighters, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Chemical Brothers, um, and Daft Punk, and I was like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. And it did actually, um, it did actually sort of give you an idea of where their heads are. You know what I mean? I, I know it's just one. You know how we how we met. That was just how it was. But it's it's not a deal breaker. But it no. it was a, it was it piqued interest. Yeah, on that particular, in that particular instance, it meant ah oh, right. It it allowed me to understand where a head was with music. Do you know what I mean? So uh, as yeah. part of getting to know someone process, I think. Yeah, that's what I meant. But yeah, um, and with the heavy thing, yeah, she doesn't like um, some of the more extreme stuff. Like like you know, I've got the, I've got my kids into Pantera. And uh, she's not having it. <laughs> Wait, she's the grooviest metal love, I've ever heard. Love, love, love Pantera. <laughs> I, I've got to revisit a bit of Pantera. I used Mate. to smash Pantera, and I've not listened to it for a long time. Yeah. Although I do, I do keep revisiting um, da the album Down Two, which is not not Pantera, is oh, it? I love just, that album. I, I love that. There's stuff New like New Orleans is a dying whore. <laughs> <laughs> you've got uh stained glass is it uh stained glass cross uh yeah, we, yeah. and um what's the other track that i love off there it's the banjo oh. one where i'm going let's be back uh, one sec oh, Sorry. Yeah, no, no problem no, no, no problem. problem mate no problem we're gonna let you off soon <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah pantera though um yeah i've got my pantera story obviously go on yeah i mean i should tell james this comes back no i i, I they supported <laughs> I must tell this every like other week or something because I remember 
one of the comments on one of the, on one of the videos on YouTube was like, yeah, Pantera rock. So I must have mentioned this at least four times. <laughs> no, when, when I was about 17, I was old enough to drive. It, it always comes up when we do song stations as well. So I've, I've obviously got a very limited repertoire. <laughs> We need, we, we need to get some new cards. At least you shuffled them this week and we got a different question. Yeah, no, I mean, I've never had that one before. They, yeah, there was just, there's a bulk of, uh, the, some of the cards have been nothing to do with music at all. Like, nothing. Like, just, whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, so, I mean, it, it when when uh, James comes back, we will actually uh, we'll let him go. We'll let him go. And, um, but yeah, Pantera, I just, I waited for them outside the Apollo in Manchester, basically, and they were supporting Megadeth. And, um, it's when they had the seats in, and uh, yeah, we've definitely like MHO backed me up because he he was he commented on it, but yeah, it just I waited for them, and I was absolutely shocked. I mean, I'm like, well, I'm six three now, but at the time, yes, James, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Just tell him about yeah, mine. Sam is just telling us for the f- fifth time about yeah. uh, Pantor- Pantera, Pantera story. I about, wait, I wait for you them. Seeing about Phil being tiny. Yeah, see, he kn- he knows the story, so I must have said it so many times. <laughs> I must have been listening no, so many well, times because it's yeah. new to me. <laughs> it, I said, I'm, that I'm surprises like, me though that Phil would be because he for seems me, in my like mind, this monster. Like, but on, honestly, like if I'm stood up, he's, he he was like that. I, I actually like could no. I thought there's something wrong here. I'm looking down at him, and you know I'd seen like Cowboys from Hell video and all that diving in the crowd and like. Rawr! And it, they were like, there was only Rex, I think, the bass player, who was like about my height. And I was all like 17. But I mean, I am relatively tall, but it just, it was the first time I'd actually seen, probably not seen somebody famous, but I mean, I'd met Keith Chagley. But, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying it was the first time I'd met someone famous because I'd met Keith Chagley. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and Matt Bianco. I mean, I went and check his like chair at Checkers Place Park when I was a kid. But... <laughs> Fuck you. Did, you. did you tell Phil the story about Keith then? No, no, it wasn't the right place. But well, I, just <laughs> prior to that, I'd seen Dave Mustaine drunk and just literally like staggering about. So, but I, I thought, surely that's not. No. And then he got on stage with his guitar like this, playing it like he wasn't drunk, but he was absolutely battered. And that's uh, that was a lesson that night. That let, these let, rock stars are battered. Just going to fit this in. Uh, Milton said, "Beautiful music, James. Thanks so much." Excellent. Oh, cheers, Milton. Yeah, and uh, Martin's going to rewind. So either way, he's got a platform. So Milton, um, he's going to come on the show later on in the year, and uh, another one of our amazing new certified trainers. And between a lot of them, you could just have a year's worth of material. Just for, in fact, we will. You know, I mean, just like there's so much you can all talk about and show and stuff. So brilliant. Well, anyway, James, um, that was a, a good answer to the question was, is it important that you're starting to say music? No, not at all. <laughs> but, it helps. but we're going to let you go, mate, because I know it's um, we've all got busy lives and we really appreciate you coming on. And uh, again, I really appreciate being invited as well. Thank oh, you. It's, it, it just uh, feels right. Pleasure's ours, mate. It, f- it feels right, mate. You know what I mean? So no doubt we will have you on again. And I mean that kind of like, like really, you know, just uh, just come on again and we'll do stuff. And I really like the fact that um, you, you explained y- your composition process and you like the whole point of this show is to talk about music and how we do it and the hurdles we jump over, smash through, or are up against. And you really did. Um, I know for me and Tim, we, I just feel that we're really selfish sometimes. We get people on. And they talk about exactly what we're up against ourselves. And it's just great. So brilliant, brilliant. So thanks, everybody, in the chat room. Uh, go yeah. check out um, James's profile. And he's got contact there. If you need any of the amazing things he's got, he's a very uh, generous and modest man. And I'm sure he'll help you out. And if any edu- educators uh, watching here who are teaching in high schools, Speak to James. You can get free Ableton Live intro for your school. And James has wrote loads of cool resources to help you smash it with your students. Boom. I hope you discovered this and that makes you happy. (laughs) So good (laughs) evening, everyone. And uh, thanks for joining. Thanks, everyone. uh, Thank you very much, James. Yeah, we'll just play the outro and we'll hope to see you again soon. Cheers for joining, guys. See you, guys. (laughs) Boom.